Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now we've been looking at the story of Esther in, in, in the Bible and, and we're in chapter 4. Now, let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for today's broadcast. Thank you for everyone listening right now. I pray that your anointing rest upon them. And let truth be ministered to their hearts. Lord, as I speak, let them hear your voice instructing them in their hearts. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So we saw that Mordecai called on Esther, like you've got to go to the king and intercede. I'm trying to jump the story, but you see, this, this, this particular story is better we read it together, praise God, than, than for me to be paraphrasing. So let's just see how we can go and because it's important. Now, yesterday we stopped at verse 8. Where Mordecai, chapter 4, verse 8, where Mordecai said, Look, go tell Esther she should go to the king and make supplications for, for, the peop, for their people. Now, verse 9. So Hattad returned and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Then Esther spoke to Hattad and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's province know that any man or woman who goes into the inner courts to the king who has not been called, he has but one law, puts all to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king these 30 days. Now, this is the queen, <laughs> praise God. The queen is saying, for 30 days she has not seen her husband. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> they had this rule then. Now, now, that's why, you see, the king had several concubines. And when the king is not set to see you, forget it. So they had that rule. And Esther said, look, yes, I got your message, but there's a problem. The challenge is, everybody knows it's a law, it's not a hidden thing. That nobody goes into the king, except the king calls the person. And I've not been called for 30 days. If I just go there myself, it means death. Except when I go there, the king holds out his scepter to me. All right. Verse 12, so they told Mordecai Esther's words, and Mordecai told them to answer Esther. Now, this is where the father starts speaking. <laughs> Verse 13, so, and Mordecai told them to answer Esther, do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, Time. Notice that. He says, if you remain completely silent at this time. Listen, there is an appointed time for everything. Esther, you see this kind of a request, like I told you um, last week. You see, Mordecai was like a father to Esther. Practically, he raised her up. When she became queen, like people would do today. He would have thought in his mind that, man, this is the opportunity God has opened for us. Uh, Esther, it's not only you that will be drinking tea with the king. Every day from now on, I'll be eating in the palace. Every day from now on, my, my, my office is now in the palace. There are people like that. See? But he didn't. He remained in his place. Now, why did he do that? I'll tell you why. Mordecai understood. Now, Mordecai was someone who knew God, who understood God. He understood that, look, God will honor every man that is faithful to him. So, I've raised Esther, and I've raised that well. And, and suddenly, God decided to pick her and make her, the, make her the king of this whole province. 
then it means that God is rewarding me for what I have done. Meaning God is going to reward me. God is going to honor me too. He knew his own time of honor would come. How would it come? You know, sometimes you don't know. You can't tell. But you see, your own is just to maintain the right attitude at all times. So, now he said to Esther, Esther said, look, listen, it is time for you to speak. And then he said, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. I love this thinking. See, as a child of God, your life must not be locked to one spot. What do I mean by that? Your life must not be locked that except social person helps you, you cannot be helped. That is an error in thinking. It is not the way of God. So if someone had promised you something and you had hoped and believed this person and then the time comes, the person says, oh, sorry, I, I, I don't think I can fulfill that promise. What happens to you? Do you go, oh, can you imagine? You know, there are people like that. They spend the rest of their life in sorrow. And you meet them 20 years later. Say, oh, what's going on with you? Ah, if that man had helped me 20 years ago, I know where I would have been by now. Look at my mates. Because they had people to help them. That man, did you, do you know, did you, the man even promised me. But he just, I know it's the devil, oh. I know it's the devil, oh. You know, hey. If you refuse to help me, sir, whatever the reason, as for me, help will come from elsewhere. That's what Mordecai said. Let's read it again. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. Straight up. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows? Whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Okay. Now, I want you to understand something. Who caused this trouble that they are facing right now? Mordecai. Because he refused to bow to Haman. He refused to pay homage to Haman. Now the whole Jews is going to be, they are going to be exterminated. And then, here is Mordecai saying to Esther, you better rise now because it may be that God have raised you in the kingdom for such a time as this. <laughs> then Esther told them to replay to Mordecai, go gather all the Jews who are present in Shusha and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Wow. Take some time here to think. Like we said, the scriptures actually said so. Esther did everything that Mordecai told her to do. Even when she became queen. She did like when he was raising her up. Now he sent this message to her that look, you better rise up and speak because if you don't, God's going to raise someone to help us. But that will mean that you and your household will perish. So when Esther got the message, see, Esther could have like, so what do you want me to do? You want me to go and die? You see, as children of God, we must understand this. There must be a way out of every situation. There is no situation. See, the Bible even said it. There is no temptation that comes to you that is, that is not common to me. But it says, in every temptation, God will always create a way of escape. So let me tell you, whatever you are facing right now that you think is tough, there is a way of escape that God had provided for you. If only... You will open your eyes to see it. And stand in faith. 
believing what God has said, and you see it come to pass. Esther said, look, this is what's going to happen. Gather all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast for me. Three days and night, nobody should eat. And then she didn't say, you go fast for me while I'm eating. And she said, I and my maids are going to fast. And then he said, on the third day, he said, my maid and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. I'm going to do something that is not lawful. But we are doing this. Why did she say they should fast? Because she wanted to do this thing in the Lord. In the Lord. Now that is the understanding that came to her. That when we fast and pray, three days saturating myself before the Lord, I'm going to appear before the king. Now what's he expecting? See, I, I told you this. When we, when we pray, we must expect an answer. We must expect result. We don't just pray and say, hopefully, God I will answer. No, we put our faith to work. David prayed a prayer. He said, Lord, turn the counsel of Ahitovel to foolishness. And then he expected an answer. And God gave him one. Now, that's the thing many people don't know. They don't know how to follow God in the process. So they think they prayed and God should do a magic for them. God is, doesn't do magic. He doesn't perform magic. He follows a process and you must learn to follow that process with him. So Esther now says, you know what? I want to appear before the king. But before I go, let me fast three days. Call these guys. Call all the Jews that are in this town. Let them fast with me. And then after the fasting, I will appear before the king. So what's going to happen? Either of two things. He will either accept me or he will kill me. So And she said, if he's killing me, if I perish... I perish. Now that was her resolve. Verse 17, So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther commanded him. Now the queen is commanding her father. Praise God. Now look at verse chapter 5. Verse 1, Now it happened on the third day that Esther put on her royal robe and stood in the inner court of the king's palace across from the king's house while the king sat on his royal throne in the royal house, facing the entrance of the house. So it was when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court that she found favor in his sight. Look at what Esther did. I want you to get wisdom here. You see, even though Esther had made up her mind, if I perish, I perish. She didn't just wake up that day and rush to the king and say, King, I need to talk to you. The Bible says she wore her robe. She dressed well that day. And she wore her royal robe and stood in the inner court of the king's palace. She just went there to stand. She didn't go there, I'm the queen. Hey, where's my husband? I won't talk to my husband. After all, it's my husband. No, she went there and she stood. And what happened? The Bible says she found favor with the king. Now, so it was when the king saw Esther standing in the court, verse 2, that she found favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther went near and touched the top of the scepter. And the king said to her, What do you wish, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you up to half the kingdom. Now, this is how the kings used to um, make acts when, when something is wrong. Oh, look, what is it? What do you want? When the king is so pleased with some, someone, he say, ask even the half of the kingdom. I'll give it to you. Praise God. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, we have to stop here now because of time. But you see, we're going to continue from here tomorrow. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We give you praise. Today, let doors of opportunities be open to your children. Let them find pastures today. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.